welcome back to another video on this channel. If you're new, hi there. If you've been here for a while, hello again. Um, today we are going to finally do a video that I've been teasing, I think, since the start of this channel. And I'm going to be talking about all the background behind Jinx and the design inspiration and all the controversy behind it too. So I'm really excited. Before we get into that, I just want to apologize. Um, there is a lot of construction going on literally in my backyard. I think somebody's trying to build a brand new building, so if you hear any of that, um, I'm really sorry. I recorded during construction before and it wasn't that bad, but we'll see how it is and what it looks like. Um, so Jinx, okay. So I remember just wanting to do this video or really getting into this video because I remembered there was some sort of like Christmas correlation between Jinx and like the anime episodes. I couldn't remember what it was exactly, um, but I was thinking about holiday videos to do and for some reason Jinx kept popping up and like obviously I know it's an ice type or whatever, but I had some like vague memory of the anime where Jinx was like a really pivotal point. Um, but I, you know, I'm old so I don't know. Uh, I couldn't remember exactly one. Um, but then I did a little bit more digging and I found the episode that is called Christmas Hijinks. And this is what really started, kicked off of the controversy and discussion about Jinx and her design inspirations. Um, which I was going to talk about in a video anyway, but I figured since, like, now I have the chronicle, chronological story of it, I might as well put it all in one video here for Christmas time. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, so this episode was called, was episode number 65. It was called Christmas Hijinks. And I think it's actually banned now in the U.S. because of everything that happened. Um, but basically, um, it's this weird westernized Christmas episode where Jessie tries to kidnap Santa Claus because she has some traumatic childhood memory of a jinx coming down as Santa Claus and stealing her toy or whatever. So now she's got this big ass grudge against Jinx and or Santa and like she tries to kidnap them. But I also one would say like, okay, why the heck is it Jinx? Um, later on in the episode, you kind of go through and you see Santa's workshop and um, and it, it is full of nothing but Jinx um, helping the workshop go, um, cleaning, doing toys, whatever. Um, and the problem behind this is that there was also a scene where there's a Jinx by herself on an iceberg shining a Santa's boot and um, a lot of like questionable images. And some of you may be wondering, okay, why are they questionable? Um, so Jinx hasn't always been purple. In fact, during the airing of this episode, Jinx's skin was completely black. Um, she also had, I mean, she still had some of the features that she still has today with like the really big lips and the blonde hair and everything, but her skin was like pitch black. Now it is purple, and they changed the skin tone based on some of the backlash behind this episode. But because of the original black skin, it made a lot of academics in the U.S., a lot of people in general, but prominently um, African American academics in the U.S. very uncomfortable with this idea that A, this is blackface, and B, um... <laughs> You have a lot of black women in subservient positions doing sorts of chores and tasks that traditional slaves would have been doing, especially for a, a wealthy white man character, right? During this conversation, when um, Jinx's design and storytelling faced a lot of criticism, uh, people were also pointing out to other animes and saying that like Japanese culture, or at least anime, has this problem of portraying black people in completely black face. Um, and like, I think... There's, like, they cite examples in Dragon Ball Z, and it, I'll put pictures of other examples up here, too, so you guys can get a be better sense of this, if this is something you're not really familiar with. Um, but yeah, basically, the like, an African-American character in, in old anime, now, I haven't seen it as much anymore, but in old Japanese anime, this was, like, supposed to be a comedic, tr a comedic trope to make black people have really accentuated features. And that's why a lot of people are calling it black faces because it's the same sort of stuff that white people did way, way back then when they were depicting, um, like, African-American people and characters. And um, some people were on the defensive. They argued, well, you know, um, 
this can't be this sorts of racism can't be present in Japanese culture just because oh, you know Japanese culture or the population of Japan is very homogeneous and that they don't have a lot of black people so they wouldn't understand the complete nuances of this anyway um I kind of want to give a little bit of pushback on that right um just and I'll give contextual evidence from this specific example where I think that the people behind the the Pokemon anime at this time knew fair well what this was and what this represented. But um, just in general, like, the, the metaphor I like to use is that, you know, obviously there is some, some argument to be made that, like, somebody can be ignorant of a certain history of another country, you know. Um, that's fine if, like, if you're an individual and you're coming from a place where you generally don't know and you, and you want to learn more and you're being constructive. Um, it's another thing if you're a multinational company selling to different audiences and included in those audiences are people from a certain demographic, but also it's the it's kind of idea of doing business, right? Or, um, what I like to say, say I'm going over to your house, right? And in my house... You know, I can keep my shoes on, whatever. You, or I can, you know, put my feet on the table, whatever. My house is really relaxed. Um, but then I go to somebody else's house, a friend's house for the first time, and I meet their parents, I'm doing all this. I wouldn't necessarily just take, put my shoes on their coffee table and just kind of wing it because that might not be okay in their, their house. You know, you want to show a certain air of respect or maybe there's like cultural differences. But my point is, is that if you're operating in somebody else's space, it's best to know their customs and what their like social and cultural rules are before being in that space. And the same can be said for a lot of international businesses who are trying to market off of, you know, um, who are trying to sell to different audiences too. And that's not just anime thing. That's not just a Pokemon thing. That's like a whole world thing. So that's just my little tidbit. But the reason I think that this was done purposefully and like... Whether people knew better or not was because Jinx's design and its correlation to Christmas is really integral to its design inspiration. So, um, a lot of people assume that Jinx's um, inspiration was for actually from a Japanese beauty trend. And I'm going to try my best to pronounce this. And if I don't do it correctly, I am so, so sorry. A lot of people say that it is based on Gonjuro. Uh, or dark face like beauty and makeup that it was a like a beauty trend from the mid 1990s where a Japanese women had like um, trying to redefy beauty standards so like obviously in that culture at that time it was really um, popular to be very fair be very thin be very natural be naturally beautiful things like that so these women as a, a like a rebel culture decided to you know get a really dark tan or use really really like heavy makeup like dark skin, really light lips instead of like, I guess, more traditional makeup where you'd have like red lips, blush, kind of like what I have right now. Um, but they would try to invert it, right? And to try to like defy the nor beauty norms of that country, which is a movement I can kind of get behind in its spirit, you know? Okay, so this kind of beauty trend also consisted of like inspirations from Japanese folklore, um, and prominently ghost demons, which is that kind of stuff, whatever looked kind of like, not necessarily scary, but it would cause an adverse reaction, right? Um, they associate with like Kabuki and um, Miyamamba, um, which is like, if you know things about like Spirit Away and things like that, that's like a mountain witch, right? Um, but this died out by around the 2000s. It, did, it was pretty short lived. Um, but there's still elements of this that have grown into different sorts of styles. Predominantly, the more witchy styles of makeup, where it's, like, still darker skin, but more white makeup and, like, neon hair. So, like, again, it... So, this contour style was very, very short-lived, but it elevated into something else. Um, but just based on, like, timelines of when this episode aired and, like, that beauty trend when it came out, like... I don't know if it 100% correlates with me. This is why I kind of want to relate it more towards what I really think this is Jinx's inspiration was, and I'm going to call it as I see it. And um, basically, I think 
Jinx is a, an interpretation of Black Beetle. If you are from US or if you're from a place that's like pretty non-European, you might not know who Black Peter is. Of course, I had to do extra research myself to figure this out. But he is a character which is, I think you find him in Belgium, but there's also other countries like the Netherlands where he's pretty predominant. And he is a figure that's associated with Christmas and Santa Claus. He's basically um, not an elf, but like Santa's helper. Helper? And uh, he's meant to be like a, a kind of trickstery figure. He's supposed to be a Moor, which is meant to be a person with really dark skin. Um, and he basically goes around and helps Santa do things. Or um, depending on the folklore, he could be like a very good a good guy or a bad guy, right? So the holiday that's like associated with him or like with the culture that's associated with him is on St. Nicholas Eve on December 5th. This is where things get a little bit dicey. Um, so St. Nicholas originally had chained demons that may or may not have been black, which is part of Germanic influences. If you know anything about Eastern European culture and folklore, it's pretty much a lot scarier than, than what you would expect. The Germanic influences might have turned them into black people slash Moors in the 19th century who were servants of St. Nicholas. And um, so they lost, the Eastern European depicted them as demons, but as time went on, they got reinterpreted as black people and slaves. And um, the thing is, is like these festivals still go on, I know for sure in Belgium, because I had friends who lived there. Um, but, you know, white people would come in and they would dress up as him and go door to door and do all these festivities, but it would still be white people who would try to blacken out their skin and do these sorts of features that are reminiscent of blackface. And again, um, this is something that's really highly debated in these cultures that turn to celebrate it. There's some people who don't view this as racist and view this as like a, a traditional thing that you know you should take pride in. And this is a conversation that's very difficult for me as an American because I just don't see something like that that could ever be um, like pretty well received here. I mean, we have conversations about cultural appropriation and what sorts of hairstyles or body features are, you know, controversial based on race. So I just don't think that this holiday would pretty much fly in the States. And of course, we have a very different cultural history than these areas. Um, we have more diverse populations. It's from my understanding that the minorities that do live in these places are really um, vibe in this holiday very much and there tends to be like a divide between ethnicities and you know whether or not this is acceptable um of course i don't want to oversimplify anything um but there has been like movements to try to get rid of this figure or at least reinterpret this figure or redesign it um to make it more culturally sensitive and there's some backlash against that too and like certain protests have gotten violent between pro um pro black peter and anti-black peter um, there's even like a movement going on to call him Sooty Pete, where basically he's not a black person, but they're redefining him as an Italian person that got covered in soot. Um, I've also seen some other movements to try to just make him flat out gold um, and, you know, just kind of taking away the blackface elements of it, but those have been met with resistance too. And that's why I think that because this timeline fits a little bit more. And because Jinx's like major appearance was tied in with the Christmas holiday, that's what makes me lean more towards the idea that she was inspired by Black Peter as opposed to this Japanese beauty trend. Um, and if that's the case, then then I personally feel as Pokemon's pretty much warranted for all sorts of this criticism because they they're making a flat out statement looking making like okay we made a pokemon designed off of black peter who is designed off of like a really negative racial stereotype of black people and former slaves and and that's really messy um i get with the black peter thing like um even though the tradition's pretty long um i just want to reiterate the fact that this depiction of him as a black person slash more slash slave didn't come about until the 19th century, which would have been the 1800s. And um, I feel like 
a lot of that had to come about with the onset of colonialism and then the slave trade and then emancipating slaves when all that discussion was really popular. So can someone attribute like a long lasting cultural tradition to it? And again, I like as an American, my understanding of long history is only like 200 or 300 years because it's, I live in a very young country, but for a lot of these European countries, like they go back thousands of years, right? So what's contemporary to them is a different sort of mind shift than what I have in my head. Um, and obviously I'm pretty one-sided when it comes to this debate. I am sympathetic towards people who might not agree with this. Um, but again, that's like 100% my opinion. And um, I think that when you put all this collective information together, it comes off in a bad light. And so... Um, that's sort of the re like it's really hard to find that episode. The only reason I found information about this was because I actually watched another YouTube video that had clips of this episode. Um, but I mean, I think Pokemon, like as a response to this, obviously they banned the episode. They realized like, oh crap, that might um, be too controversial for us. There's other like banned episodes in the anime. And if you guys want a video talking about all of those and like the reasons why they were banned, I'll totally include that for you too. Um, but in addition to banning the episode, they also changed Jinx's skin color from like the dark black to a purple color. Um, of course, there's still like remnants of that culture, even if you don't know so much of the history of this Pokemon design or like what the controversy that happened. I mean, I remember like being young and even like cat, not even casual Pokemon fans, but just people on the internet in general would um, make comparisons between Jinx's body type and like Nicki Minaj's or whatever. And even though those might be a joke and like funny or um, there is sort of like undertones of racism just because like obviously Nicki Minaj has like fake very accentuated features right you know but also kind of points at like this perception of blackness and like a negative portrayal of what blackness is for black women and like even without that dark black skin tone people can still see it and identify those stereotypes or those char like um, condemned characteristics for black women in Jinx, right? And that's like a long-standing legacy that like regardless of, you know, slight changes or like, you know, censoring information or whatever, that sort of legacy is still there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the point. I still think, I mean, I've never used Jinx personally. Jinx isn't necessarily my favorite Pokemon. And I, and I will full out say that, like, I used to be one of those kids that would make fun of Jinx, too, and make fun of the way she looked and everything like that. I think at the time I was still on the board with, the, like, I was of the opinion that um, this was still just, like, a Japanese beauty trend that they were making fun of, and I think a lot of people feel that way, too. Um, but now that I've done more research on it and, like, kind of grown and seen the world the way I do, I think this leans more towards negative portrayals of black women in, um an anime franchise which again is something they did with a lot of black characters before um but like i said i'd see that dying out i think as japanese anime becomes more mainstream or globally focused um that inherently will wean it off and i think they've really done that and i know plenty of people who are in the black community who freaking love anime you know like megan the stallion is like a weeaboo and that's so cool that you know parts of urban culture are now incorporating like um, Japanese anime elements too and you know I mean Doja is oh, totally into anime and like I don't know I think Japanese is becoming synonymous with being more mainstream and obviously if you are like producing this sort of content and you want this to be picked up by western audiences you should be mindful of like everybody that comprises that audience too um, but yeah what you think I know this video took forever to make and I'm really really sorry I just didn't, I don't know, you know, and you're like, I have all these little video ideas in mind and this I felt like would be a longer one, so it takes a little bit more effort to put into. Um, but I haven't done a theory in a really, really long time and I'd like to share this one with you too. This is by no means original <laughs> at all. This is like um, a sort of Pokemon theory lore tidbit design thing that's existed in the community for a very long time, so I do not claim this as my own original ideas at all. Um, if you want, I can put other videos in the description below if you want to do like other, hear other opinions. 
about Jinx and like design inspirations because it, it can be kind of polarizing, I guess. I don't know. But this is just what I thought. This is what I've kind of pieced together. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Comment down below. Interact with me. I always respond to comments and I have some people that are super, super awesome and give me recommendations for future videos and I will totally listen to those too. Um, or you can just like share with a friend, get the word out. I really, really appreciate it. Um, most of my content, like I get a decent amount of views, but the people who are watching aren't always subscribed. I think like 80% of the people who watch aren't subscribed. So if you like this, please, please, please subscribe. It's a great motivation for me to continue putting in work to do this kind of stuff. And I really enjoy it. So there you go. But until next time, thanks so much for watching. Thanks. Bye.